uh, another way around. But so let us now suggest not to forget our last but not the least presenter. <laughs> so so suggest uh, he he's prepared. To, and uh, this is another representative of Lauber University. And now we are coming back. I've already just made a kind of promotion. We are coming back to a cortical bone. So just uh, now away from the artificial biomedical materials. So just it is Dr. Simi Lee. So just and he will start his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Simi Lee. I'm the lecturer in uh, Lauber University. Uh, so this work is ongoing work, uh, which is done by uh, the PT students uh, Mayao and Co, which is also co-supervised by Professor Sufjimet. Uh, so the topic today uh, of my presentation is on the uh, phenomenon of analysis of structure uh, toughness of cortical bones, uh, which uh, endured uh, previously by uh, Professor Sufjimet, uh, which we're looking at the effects of osteonal uh, microstructures on the structural toughness of these uh, uh, biocomposite materials. So I understand that uh, I'm the last uh, of the presentation, so with, not, uh, with uh, no further ado, I would like to introduce uh, the background and methodologies, and uh, I'll conclude uh, uh, at the end of my presentation. Um, so, of course, uh, the uh, structural healthy and integrity of the bone is of great importance uh, for all of our human bodies. Uh, without that, uh, we cannot move, uh, we cannot sustain ourselves, and even with the uh, necessary nutrition that we need. Uh, but uh, the uh, prevalence of the uh, bone fractures uh, has been uh, high and sustained level uh, for the past uh, few, cent uh, few decades, and uh, the, uh, with ever increasing uh, populations and the wider spectrums of the aging uh, population that having uh, sustained uh, bone injuries and fractures. So, of course, understanding the uh, fracture mechanisms of these uh, biocomposite materials is of great importance uh, for not only for the individual beings, but also uh, has its uh, economic and societal benefits as well. Uh, so, before I start to talk about the fracture mechanics uh, of the uh, cortical bones, I would like to introduce uh, uh, some fundamental basics of these uh, uh, naturally occurring biocomposite materials. Uh, as you can see from this uh, diagram, that uh, bone is, uh, uh, especially the cortical bone, is uh, hierarchical uh, uh, with multilevel uh, hierarchical uh, structures uh, uh, and uh, heterogeneously distributed uh, microconstituents uh, along the different uh, uh, length scales. Uh, and uh, in these studies, we uh, mostly uh, focusing on the macroscopic level and microscopic levels. Uh, and historically, we know that uh, bone is uh, uh, naturally occurring uh, composite material which has both the extrinsic, uh, uh, extrinsic and the intrinsic uh, fracture toughening mechanisms that uh, uh, giving the uh, rising uh, fracture resistance uh, uh, characteristics of this material. Um, and historically, uh, through the research, um, we already know that uh, uh, through aging, so we have a significant change in the morphological uh, characters of these uh, um, uh, materials. Uh, uh, I.e. that uh, when you uh, age, you have uh, larger porosities, which is predominantly uh, promoted by the increasing uh, diameters of the house and canals. And this house and canals is basically um, uh, uh, empty spaces uh, which will pass by the uh, blood vessels and nerve cells, uh, and nerve vessels, which also uh, promotes the nutrition exchange within the bone tissue. And as you age, these uh, uh, canals will enlarge themselves. Uh, but not only the hubs and canals enlarge, but also the uh, the osteum structures, which uh, uh, is basically the uh, the tubular structure of the uh, fibrous structures that you see at uh, macroscopic levels, and they run through uh, longitudinally along the main axis <coughs> of the bone. Uh, the the diameters of this osteum structure also increases as well. Um, um, so with these significant changes, and morphologically, uh, but also uh, the, uh, um, mechanically, the structure and the mechanical properties of the bone uh, varies significantly, which uh, previously uh, uh, Professor Schiff-Schmidt uh, alluded to us that uh, bone is an isotropic, uh, with uh, up to fourfold of difference between the longitudinal and transverse directions uh, of its mechanical properties, but also uh, um, uh, at local regions, you will see the variabilities between different uh, uh, directions, the different cortices of the bones. And the, these differences uh, can change uh, from um, one to two uh, magnitudes of uh, one to two folds of difference uh, between, um, uh, between 
different anatomic positions. And uh, uh, essentially, because we are all different uh, in height and species and weight, and, uh, our bones will differ between one another. Um, so the mechanical property uh, variability not only lies within the uh, elastic region, but also the the, po uh, the yield and post uh, post yield uh, behavior as well. As you can see, that uh, the uh, variabilities of the uh, fracture toughness, uh, that which is characterized uh, previously, uh, you can see that uh, the there are significant changes in terms of <coughs> standard deviation. Uh, so with all this uh, in mind. Um, that is the challenge that we're facing in terms of the material wise, but also uh, by looking at uh, how we can understand the, um, the mechanics of uh, bone fracture, we're also looking at computationally uh, method uh, methodologies to look at it, because uh, when you look at the bone fractures, it's very hard to experimentally characterize because of the nature and ethics that we involved uh, in looking at uh, how we can understand uh, or doing experiments on the uh, live patient. So uh, computational is uh, an alternative method. But um, uh, previous uh, um, uh, studies uh, uh, looking at the fracture mechanics of cord bone using uh, methods such as uh, extended uh, or enriched uh, final element methods, uh, it has its advantage, but also has its drawbacks uh, uh, such as uh, high computational time uh, costs, and also it's uh, limited in terms of its uh, uh, crack perforations and uh, uh, perforation abilities. As we all know that uh, uh, cracks can generate, uh, we, can gen we, can have, we can see multiple cracks and we can see crack perforates and uh, deviate uh, from one another in, in, in these uh, uh, composite materials. But uh, previous uh, XFAM based uh, methodology cannot uh, do this uh, realistically. Um, the other methods involving these zone elements, uh, which uh, needs to define a pretty arranged uh, uh, damage zone, um, which is not uh, also beneficial for the uh, analysis of bone fracture because uh, uh, within these uh, composite materials, the fracture path uh, is highly difficult, uh, is very difficult to, to predict. <coughs> so a pretty rearranged uh, crack path is, uh, uh, of course, uh, not ideal. So what we propose uh, to uh, overcome these uh, difficulties is use uh, zero sickness uh, uh, cohesive elements, which we enrich all these elements, uh, uh, superpose all these elements uh, on top of the, the convention elements that we mesh uh, within the microstructured uh, bone tissue so that uh, we can have a fully uh, enabled uh, a random crack pass uh, around the, uh, the element, or around the, the each uh, of the elements. Uh, so the uh, workflows of these uh, uh, zero sickness cohesive elements uh, is uh, as following, so basically we generate a, as not, a normal uh, a final element uh, an input files, and within the input file we use a map like a script uh, to um, generate a zero sickness cohesive element around all the boundaries of existing elements. And then uh, after these generations, and, uh, we will have uh, uh, a complete model which are capable of uh, um, um, Compute the fracture uh, propagation uh, uh, initiation and propagation analysis uh, around these uh, enriched domains, and therefore uh, to generate a, a, a solution based uh, path uh, that we need. Uh, so, therefore, with the, all these experimental parts and computational parts, we propose uh, 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 the following uh, uh, research methodologies and that for, we would like to use uh, uh, to consider the a realistic experimental uh, parameters so that uh, um, our simulation have a realistic uh, experimental uh, characteristics but also uh, numerically uh, accurate uh, to uh, model the crop initiation and applications of this uh, naturally occurring composite material. Um, so from the experiment parts, I would like to introduce uh, um, the, the process as following. So from uh, the morphological point of view, uh, we use uh, four different groups of uh, patients, uh, uh, ranging from young, um, senior, uh, uh, disease group, which is uh, osteoporosis um, uh, patient groups, and the treated group is basically those uh, who have uh, also osteoporosis um, disease will be treated with uh, uh, biophosphate uh, um, uh, medications. So. As previously underlined, that uh, as you age and as uh, the age groups difference that uh, differs each other, so the morphological characters between these four groups are uh, changing significantly. Uh, to underline these changes, we can use um, uh, computational um, uh, 
uh, tools uh, to measure the evolving functions of each of these constituents. I, at the microscopic levels, we have osteonal uh, structures uh, uh, with the uh, concentric layer of the Hobson canals, which I uh, previously introduced. And uh, so the osteonal structures is normally embedded into the interstitial matrix, uh, which like a conventional uh, fiber reinforced uh, composite. Uh, so this is a matrix material, uh, which we call interstitial uh, areas. Um, to quantify those uh, uh, constituent uh, parameters, we use uh, uh, we, we consider, we uh, idealize the osteon structures as uh, uh, ellipses uh, with a uh, long and short axi uh, axial uh, and we also measuring the orientations of uh, uh, the axis. Um, therefore, uh, full down, we consider the, the half nails as uh, uh, simple uh, circles because the uh, eccentricity of the half canal is uh, considerably smaller than that of the, the osteons. Uh, so the results of our experimental uh, measurements uh, uh, gives us uh, uh, the statistically realized uh, uh, computational models, uh, uh, which is uh, closely represent uh, the uh, morphological different uh, characters of each individual uh, patient groups, uh, as you can see here. Um, so these we produced uh, two sets of uh, uh, statistically realized uh, computational models uh, for each of the uh, four groups. Uh, as you can see here, uh, and, and you can probably uh, have a guess that uh, which groups uh, belongs to which based on the uh, the characters. As you can see, that we see uh, uh, much less uh, porosities in the young groups uh, compared to those of the senior and disease groups. And to, uh, to quantify those, as you can see, that those uh, uh, the volume fractions of each constituents are. Uh, are uh, only follow what we have uh, measured experimentally, and as you can see, that uh, uh, the morphological uh, characters of the Hudson canals and as well as osteo uh, osteonal areas are completely different uh, from the uh, young uh, group to that of the disease and senior groups. Um, so, with that being said, uh, then we further produce our computational models, i.e., the final animal models. Uh, we use the uh, existing literatures, uh, uh, which uh, we use the existing uh, studies, uh, the experimental studies, uh, the, the geometry that is taken from the um, previous uh, study, and then we use the uh, uh, material properties that is obtained uh, uh, experimentally uh, from the literature uh, <coughs> previously, including the string energy restraint of each of the different constituents. Uh, that is underlined. And uh, in this uh, modeling, uh, computational modeling uh, schemes, we use uh, again multi scale modeling techniques and we have um, homogenized uh, large areas of the compact tension specimens, which is loaded in, 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 in tensile. And then in, in, in front of the, the uh, pre notch, we have uh, uh, microstructured regions of the uh, uh, constituents that we model, uh, that we realized uh, based on the uh, Morphological characters of these groups <coughs> of the patient, um, and the results um, here is showing the, uh, the preliminary result that we, uh, the ongoing result that we have obtained so far. As you can see, that uh, between these four groups, uh, you will see that uh, there's, uh, uh, in terms of its uh, uh, fractal uh, topography, um, there's a distinct uh, characters between these four groups. Namely, uh, for the young groups, you will see the crack pathways. Uh, significantly um, around the assembly line regions, so which is uh, uh, very uh, with slightly softer regions uh, uh, between the uh, housing, uh, uh, between the osteonal areas and the uh, interstitial matrix materials. And because of these uh, uh, crack deflections or kinks around the housing uh, regions, um, this this is a significant phenomenon that you see only in these young groups. Uh, which is also uh, which is absent uh, in the uh, senior and uh, especially the uh, uh, the other three groups. Uh, in terms of the senior groups, as you can see here, that uh, you can see some uh, uncracked uh, lemon bridges uh, uh, that is uh, potentially um, giving the contributions of the fracture toughening mechanism later on. And from the treaty group, you can see a combinations of a slightly less uh, seventh line. Uh, deflections as well as uh, uncracked lemon bridges. But uh, in the disease groups, however, 
you see that there's little deflections uh, through assembly line, uh, and most of the cracks is penetrate through uh, directly uh, into the osteoms. And you will see the similar captures uh, of the uh, fractal uh, photography of these uh, four groups. Uh, again, this is the second realization of the, the, the same four groups, um, which have uh, which bear the similar characteristics that I uh, mentioned previously. Uh, to quantify those uh, uh, fracture um, propagation captures, so as uh, summarized here, that you can see that among the young groups, there are uh, almost uh, half percent of the fracture fractures passing through the uh, the same line, uh, while you see that. Uh, there's next to nothing uh, of the fractures coming uh, through the disease groups. Uh, for the senior and treated group, uh, there are moderate uh, crack that is passing around uh, uh, five to ten percent uh, on average uh, into the same line. So we can um, doing a great uh, we can we can make a, a straightforward conclusion that uh, uh, that same line because of its. Uh, uh, slightly softer and uh, 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 material properties that uh, uh, can potentially be uh, fracture coupling mechanisms that uh, will uh, deflect and sometimes arrest uh, the cracks within the microstructured uh, regions. Uh, looking at the uh, the fracture resistance curves, so if you compute the uh, the k values against the crack extension curves for all the groups uh, that we see. As you can see, that uh, for the young groups, uh, it is uh, straightforwardly uh, uh, superior to the other three groups. As you can see, um, in both in terms of its uh, initial uh, k-values as well as the slope of the k-values are uh, uh, significantly larger than those of the three other groups. And uh, in, if you look closely for those uh, disease groups, which is the, the dash and dotted line here, that uh, the slope of the disease groups are are uh, almost uh, are the worst uh, of the of the four groups. Again, to quantify those um, um, uh, fracture resistance curves, as you can see here, uh, young groups of course uh, had the uh, highest initial k values uh, compared to the the, the disease group. Of course, would be the worst, and the slope as uh, the slope of the, the, the k values um, uh, are also documented here, uh, against with uh, each of the velocities uh, of the group. Uh, and all these values are comparable with uh, previous experiments uh, that you see in, in, in Chan uh, et al. 2009. And the value slightly uh, differs between our young groups and uh, those uh, young groups that experiment, uh, we see experimentally uh, potentially can be uh, attributed to the uh, fact that we're only considering the uh, microscopic, uh, mi uh, <coughs> microscopic uh, effect of the uh, morphological uh, toughening mechanism or intrinsic toughening mechanism. So, and we did not consider uh, full the down the line of uh, sub uh, micro scales and nano scale uh, toughening mechanisms, which can contribute towards the uh, full enhanced uh, k values as we see in the experimental uh, study. Uh, again, to further look into the details of the more, uh, the fracture uh, topographies of each group, as you can see that uh, at the uh, young, uh, within the young groups, so you see that uh, uh, we have a simply higher fracture forces. Uh, against displacement curves, and we have identified three key uh, regions of the uh, of the curve. As you can see, that uh, uh, fracture propagates uh, uh, through significantly uh, uh, more into the central line regions, which is uh, a potential uh, toughening mechanism which deflects cracks around and away from the osteoms uh, into the more tougher interstitial areas. And this ha uh, this process happens throughout. The, the, the entire crack propagation process. Therefore, you can see a very high fracture forces and the sustained level of the, of the resistance uh, force along the uh, crack propagation process. Uh, on the contrary, in the senior groups, um, you see a significantly less uh, fracture force um, due to the fact that uh, there's less um, uh, crack deflections around the center line and rest uh, within the center line. Um, but rather, you see some kinds of uh, um, on crack level bridges uh, within the same line, so there are still, at, towards the later parts of the crack propagations, you will see a slightly increase in terms of its uh, uh, peak fracture force uh, along the line. Um, compared to the disease group, which is worst uh, of the four, uh, as you can see, 
that the DECRA course uh, is, uh, is the lowest of all four groups. Um, there is absence uh, either of the uh, uh, line uh, fracture toughening mechanisms as well as the uncracked uh, ligament bridges. And you can see that uh, in terms of the cracked parts, that uh, the cracks cut straight, uh, straight, straight forward into the osteum, which is the weakest part, uh, I think, which, which is the, uh, um, uh, which having a lower toughness because of the, uh, the housing uh, cavities uh, that is present in the, in the middle of the osteum. Uh, for, uh, the last one for the treated groups, of course, uh, uh, because of the improvements of its porosities uh, as well, we can see that there are uh, um, a moderate uh, uh, toughening mechanism that it presents. Uh, sometimes we can see that uh, 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 crack regions uh, within the um, interstitial and uh, osteoma areas, and we can see a moderate uh, uh, here as well, we can see moderate uh, uh, central line uh, arrestings and deflections. Um, mechanisms that uh, within this uh, uh, morphological character um, uh, might structure bone uh, tissue. Uh, to compare with the experimental study, that, as you can see, that our models uh, totally uh, uh, realize that uh, what we see in the experiments in the young groups, as you can see, that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, crack deflections around central lines uh, away from the uh, osteum uh, areas. But for the senior or the age groups, you can see that the crop, uh, the, the crop path uh, goes straight into the osteoma and pass through uh, along the line. And uh, our uh, fracture resistance curves uh, are within the uh, standard deviations and being of the uh, experimental study, as you can see. And previously, I mentioned that uh, we are only looking at uh, a meso and microscopic toughening mechanisms. Therefore, our value are slightly uh, at the, towards the lower uh, spectrums of the experimental uh, study, but still within the uh, standard deviations of what was uh, observed before. Uh, so this is uh, again uh, for the human uh, cortical bones. So we did not start uh, stop our study uh, or investigation at uh, this point. We again for the look at uh, what if we change the uh, material properties of the human body bone into uh, uh, a bovine body bone which has uh, uh, less uh, rigid uh, uh, microconstituents but a slightly uh, higher um, uh, uh, structure toughening mechanisms. And the results, as you, uh, the, the mechanical properties are summarized here, uh, as you can see. Slightly lower in modulus, but uh, significantly higher uh, screen energy restraints that is uh, uh, being documented previously. So the results of our study, um, as you can see, that it closely follows what was uh, uh, described experimental uh, study in Anvil, uh, Arola, and uh, Dejan at 2001, 2011. Um, looking at uh, the uh, fracture topographies of the crack past, as you can see that uh, we see simply uh, more ascent line uh, deflections uh, along the, the crack paths, which not necessarily be a beneficial at this stage. So um, if you look at the uh, fracture resistance curves, uh, I know that's um, slightly over the time, but I was just to speed up. Uh, at, as you can see that uh, the fracture resistance curves uh, against the, um, the crack, re uh, crack extension, uh, we can distinctly uh, uh, separate these uh, um, uh, key values into four different uh, uh, sections. And the initial sections, uh, as you can see closely, uh, because of the fracture uh, propagation um, towards the institution matrix and then slightly uh, diverge uh, from the center line, there was a slight increase in terms of the fracture uh, uh, toughening mechanism, the key values. Uh, but for the second stage, which we see uh, more uh, plateau of the uh, key values, that is because of the uh, extensive de uh, deflection and kinks uh, of uh, the crack pass along the center line. Uh, as I mentioned previously, that uh, some line can be a uh, fracture toughening mechanism, but uh, if you have a significantly more uh, crack deflections within uh, and along the center line, it is not necessarily the beneficial uh, point. And again, uh, for the third stage, we see, if I go back, uh, the third stage where we see the significant jumps in terms of the, the k-value is because of the uh, significant uh, uh, crack alignment uh, bridges here that is on the, uh, which uh, increase the uh, fracture resistance uh, uh, force uh, along the line. So I think um, um, 
uh, with all these informations I uh, underlined, I would like to conclude that uh, uh, our model, of course, uh, uh, produced a realistic and uh, computationally efficient uh, uh, methodology is to uh, investigate the fracture of initiation and propagations along the microstructured uh, uh, cortical bones, which can give some um, potential insights in the future design of uh, uh, composite or biocompatible um, materials. Uh, but uh, the morphological characters of uh, microconstituents affect the fracture toughness uh, and toughening mechanisms. Specifically, uh, a crack, if you see that uh, crack propagations along and arrest uh, by the seventh line, can be a, a potential fracture toughness and uh, fracture toughening mechanism, as well as the uh, fracture level abrasion. But these are the, the factors that are competing interest with the competing interest. So you have a significant. Uh, fracture toughening mechanisms within the same line, it is not necessarily the best thing, as you can see uh, towards our second studies uh, along the uh, quarter of the bovine uh, cortical bone, where we have a simply less uh, plateau of the uh, fracture resistance, the slope of the K-band there. Uh, and apart from the young modules, uh, young groups, we see that uh, there is a uh, the crack region was the dominant uh, fracture toughening mechanisms along the other three groups, which uh, 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 can improve the fracture toughnessisms uh, for the senior and treated groups. So with that, I would like to thank you for, more, for your attention and... Uh, <laughs> now we have, we just, just promised we have time for questions, which is why uh, Dr. Lee is still here. Let's start with questions to our last. Presented, you better say it? Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so the 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 yeah, from the experimental uh, So, as typical, the lecturers are here <laughs> among ourselves. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, but still, if you have, uh, there were quite many questions uh, from, from one lecturer to another lecturer, and mm -hmm. so just to give this back, so that's why. Any questions? So then I probably would su summarize, so just for benefits of everybody, and you would agree that, uh, so just uh, contrary to the, so just I would say, old-fashioned and so just in the boring stuff, like we hear in other sections, this is a much more interesting, oh, I, I know old stuff as well, so just, that's why I have a video as well. So just, uh, this is the area where still there are much more interesting questions and challenges than anywhere else. So you've seen this, uh, and so this is just the proportion is practically what I see generally that now we have here, it was planned from uh, nine lectures, uh, three were biological materials, they were so just, uh, uh, mine was just kind of more but predominantly biological material, arteries and two bones, and so just uh, two thirds were so just the uh, biomedical materials. Uh, this contrast to biological material. Oh, by the way, so just I also would like to explain the difference. People are calling biomaterials, so I especially insist on separation. So because, the, as in my committee, you can see biological materials are materials produced by God or nature, while so just uh, biomedical materials, they are produced artificially by engineers, material scientists, and so on. So that's why I think that this is a, so just a very interesting topic. This is now the second time that I'm organizing this mini symposium with this. The next one will be definitely in 2020 in Madeira. So especially young, young people so just who have good ideas and so just uh, can contribute, uh, so just, if not better than at least longer, then the senior ones, so just here, welcome and so just don't forget that tomorrow at 2.30 in this room, we will have the technical committee and so just that, so just everybody is uh, welcome because it's the community to which defines the politics, what is going on, what are the most important topics. We can organize under the umbrella of European Structural Integrity Society. We are organizing now, this is, as you've seen, the first uh, conference on stands, but uh, we can so just uh, clearly organize if there is such an interest. Additive manufacturer 
in suggesting biomedical applications or whatever it is there. As far as there is an interest and as far as the people who would like to just to contribute was this organization because we are all doing this together. It is just everybody, everybody is welcome. Okay? Good. Fine, that's so just enjoy the, just the weather is good. At the end of the day, thank you very much. Thank you. Can you change your parameters so that uh, uh, you have a more uh, 